Hey, it's Mandy from Mending Mandy, and today I wanted to give you a tour of my garden. It's a place that helps me to feel less depressed. Maybe it'll give you some enjoyment and calmness in your life. I also wanted to give you some things that I've learned from being a first-time gardener, and maybe that'll help you. Also, leave a comment down below on your favorite gardening hack. I'm sure I can learn from you guys, too. So yeah, it's um, a few beds as you can see. There's basil over there, some nice zinnias over here. We have some marigolds and then some nice dying zucchini <laughs> um, flowers. And then all up here we've got tomatoes and eggplant is down there as well. So I'll just go through a little bit. So this is our first bed, as you can see. And what we have here is some basil. And all of this is homegrown. Everything in this garden we did from seed, which was quite intense. I learned so much about seedlings as well. And with this basil, I had probably 13 seedlings that we put in here. And the thing about this that I would say is Hardening off is such an important process. So hardening off is when you take the seedlings and you get them used to the outdoors by taking them outside a little bit every day. And the reason you want to do this is because if you don't and you just place them in the sand or the soil, they're going to go through some transplant shock and they could die. So mine, I hardened them off for a couple weeks and then I transplanted and they had black little dots on them and I seriously thought they were dying. But it turns out that they were just going through a little bit of transplant shock and had been eaten by bugs, which showed black spots. But obviously they're great now. Nasturtiums looked a little better earlier. We've got some peppers in there, as maybe you can see. Let's look. Yep, there's some peppers. You see some red ones over there. Bell peppers. And then right here we have zinnias. So these zinnias do look a little beet, um, and that is because you can see the Japanese beetle damage. And these zinnias have served, uh, served us well. They're beautiful, but also the reason you want to plant flowers in the garden is because they can attract bugs so they don't eat your other plants that you want to eat. <laughs> so with these zinnias, the Japanese beetles ate up the leaves of these flowers, which I didn't even know was gonna happen, but they did. And that drew the beetles to these plants instead of our vegetables. So that was actually a godsend. The other reason is flowers um, can deter pests as well. Marigolds are very good at deterring pests that are common on tomatoes. So these zinnias are still beautiful to look at, even though they're a little damaged and um, they give the garden some nice color and pollinators. Now I'm trying to get ready for fall. There was nothing planted here initially. Um, and I planted a few beets. I don't know if you can really see them on camera, but they're in there. Maybe you can see one. Um, but those I'm preparing for the fall garden. Here in Virginia, there is a very long growing season. Right here, we have a bunch of, as I zoom in a little bit more, I can move this and see that red jalapeno. I learned something about jalapenos. And it's that if they stay on the vine, they change colors. They go to red and then black. So that's pretty cool. And then we have right there is one, if you can see it. He's growing that nice emerald green color. So what I wanted to show you with these zucchinis is what happens when a pest called vine borers get into your plant. I don't know if you can see it. Look at this right here. The, this is from vine borers. This is not normal. This is um, damage from vine borers. And what they are, it's a moth that comes and lays eggs at the base of your plant, at the stem. And what they do is when the eggs are laid, they hatch and they're little maggoty looking things. 
and they eat into the plant. It's kind of crazy because it's like their shelter, but it's also what they eat. So they just come in here and they eat all along the stem, going all the way up into the leaves until they look like this. And they just sap the nutrients. And all this sawdust stuff is actually their poop. Yes, I touched poop. I'm a mom now, so this is what I do, you know, insect poop, baby poop, dog poop, all the poop. So anyway, yes, vine borers, horrible things. I hate them so much. So we go down here again, marigolds. The Japanese beetles really like these. So as you can see, they're kind of deadish looking. Um, Japanese beetle ate those instead of our plants, which is awesome. Down here, we have some cucumbers. They're kind of fat and chubby. And those I'm gonna try to can. I've never canned before, so wish me luck. Um, but cucumbers, they've been probably the most effortless things we've grown. They just don't require a lot of attention. These bad boys are the beefsteaks. These are big tomatoes. So beefsteaks are basically the ones that you slice or cut um, on, into sandwiches or whatever. They're girthy. Last year I tried to grow these and this was the only thing I grew and it got blight and died. So this year they're doing a lot better. Um, a lot of better gardeners than I will let you know that you do need to pinch the suckers off. These kind of got away from me. So they're, they're kind of really bushy and that's what happens if you let tomatoes um, go a little bit crazy. So I wanted to show you, I posted on Instagram, this is my fasciated tomato. And it's when a few blossoms fuse together and make this crazy looking tomato. I think it's kind of cool looking and fun to stare at. And it's the first one ripening, so it sticks out like a sore th thumb. But look at that bad boy, like he's so weird looking. And he's like this beautiful fiery red color. But yeah, that's a normal one, you know. It kind of looks like a pumpkin right now, but these are really fun to grow. Tomatoes are very versatile. So next to the cherry tomatoes are our eggplants. And we do live in a warmer climate, so they are able to grow. I think these are my favorite. Even when I transplanted, I was really excited for these. Eggplants are a lot different than tomatoes. A lot of times we think, okay, it's on the vine. That means it's going to get riper as it turns and turns well to a certain point with eggplant yes tomatoes will keep ripening until they're ready to pick and they'll just get sweeter and sweeter and redder however eggplant get to a point where they start getting dull and then they kind of lose their flavor if you don't pick them at a good time so that's one thing i learned as a new gardener let's go over to that eggplant and check it out He's looking like he's been on here a little bit long because there is some green on here. Um, when there's green, that means he's getting a little bit old. So, and, and as I press on him, he bounces back very well. So this one might be a little bit old, but that doesn't mean he still wouldn't be yummy. You know, once they get to the point where they're not usable, they get really dull and just like more green and purple mix. This is still a very good viable eggplant the garden and this is what my husband comically calls tomato alley <laughs> so these are all tomatoes and yes again we did kind of let them get away from us these are indeterminate tomatoes they're just like the cherry tomatoes I showed you before and indeterminate tomatoes will grow as high as you let them um, determinate tomatoes are more bushy and they don't need to be pruned as much and they'll pretty much stay a pretty standard size depending on what kind but these boy these get huge so for scale I wanted to show you so that's the top of the plant right well I'm gonna step in and show you how tall these are so like I am 5'7 and that's how tall <laughs> he's like over six foot I don't even know they're huge so yeah this short video was just the things that I learned from having a garden in the first year. And um, thank you so much for joining me. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. This is my safe haven. This is where I go when I'm stressed out. This is where I come water plants with my baby. So again, thank you so much for watching.